An individual in my area recently posted about a man that followed them to their apartment complex while walking their dog next door. This reminded me of a creepy encounter I had about two years ago that always made me wonder if I could have been kidnapped, also sorry, if the format is wrong, etc. This is my first post on this sub. It was about 2am and I just returned home from a night out, which meant I had to take the dog out for a quick late night potty walk. The complex I lived in had a long main street with various U-shaped streets on both sides, which were filled with buildings on each side of the U. I popped my headphones in and we got to walking. Once we reached the other side of our street, I watched what seemed to be a Toyota Camry with fresh duller plates speed into and drift around the rounded section of our street. It seemed as though they came to a complete stop once they noticed I was on the sidewalk. They then proceeded to creep very slowly to the stop sign at the second entrance exit of my street. It seemed as though they waited there until we were adjacent from the stop sign. They then slowly turned right and then cut their will at a 45-ish degree angle, partially into the initial entrance they sped into the side that I lived on, especially in the crosswalk. I realized they were also conveniently located where a couple of street lamps were broken, causing complete darkness within the crosswalk in immediate surrounding areas. At this point, I decided to walk in the light under a street lamp as my dog began to display interest in the car, as if he were sketched out and ready for something to go down. He's roughly 65 pounds. Thus, I felt protected. We both stared at the car for a few minutes before I suddenly heard their tires screeching onto the main street towards a complex exit. I always wondered if I didn't have a larger dog or if my dog didn't display a protective demeanor if I would have had been kidnapped that night. Edit. I just wanted to add that I did see a man with a baseball cap, but his face was mostly covered with the angle of the hat, etc. However, it did seem like he was looking right at us as he crept by to the stop sign. I just couldn't see his eyes. When I, female, 21, was 17, I wanted to au pair, and the only place close to me that I could go to as a 17-year-old was England. So I found this family, a mother with two kids, a boy and a girl. I messaged them and talked with the mother, and she seemed very interested and very nice. We set up a date for me to go, and that was that. When I got to the airport, I was very confused that they weren't here to pick me up. I messaged the mother to ask where they were, if it would be long for them to get me. She told me that she was on her way and was just stuck in traffic. I thought, okay, that's fair. She told me to go to the exit and wait. Then not long after, she told me that she was there and that she was in a blue car. I was looking around very confused since I couldn't really see any blue car there. When I finally found it, some other woman than the one I had been talking to walked out of the car and towards me. The instant I made eye contact with the other woman, I got a long text from the woman I was supposed to work for, where it basically said that her husband had come home from the country he worked in and that they had fought because he didn't want an au pair in the house. And for some reason, she didn't want to tell him that. So she just gave me to her good friend who needed an au pair. I was very confused and by that time, a bit scared. It all seemed very weird as if someone was watching me and had been waiting for the right moment to send the text. The woman seemed very friendly, but was hurrying with taking my things and putting it in the car while talking to me. I'm a bit nervous and non-confrontational by nature, so I didn't really know what to do or say other than just follow her and what she was doing. When it's all done, she told me we should get going. She told me that we should get going, and I told her that I wasn't really comfortable with it all. She told me that she understood, but that she really needed the help, and also only had two children at home. We had to move fast because of this place she was parked. 
so we got into the car and started driving out of the airport pickup spot. The second we started moving, I told her that I was very uncomfortable with this and I really needed to get out and stay at the airport. She seemed a bit upset by this and told me that sure, she could drop me off, but she had to get out of where we were because she could get a ticket for letting me out there or something. I don't know if this is true, just what she told me. We drove for a few minutes, still on the airport grounds, and we stopped a bit away so I could get out and call my parents. I talked to them sobbing the whole time. I noticed that while I was talking to them, the woman was inside her car, talking to a woman, the one that I had been talking to, I presume. I didn't understand language, so I can't say what they were talking about. When I was done talking, I got into the car again and told her that I really want her to let me out. And she kept asking me if I was sure and I didn't want to go into town with her. If I didn't want her to drop me off by the shopping center, I of course told her no. That I really wanted her to just let me out by the airport. She did, thankfully. And I went inside and talked with my parents. After this happened, I got some weird voice memos from her and two other people. I couldn't understand them, but it was very weird. My parents also tried contacting her, and she blocked them both. If you don't know, a lot of au pairs are being treated very poorly. So for us to feel safe and secure, ensure that we don't get cheated out of pay or working more than we are allowed, we have to sign a contract. Later on, I found out that the contract she had sent me was fake and not really binding. I don't know how, but it wasn't legitimate. Plus, her addresses she had sent me were also fake, and she apparently didn't live there either. I found out later on that the city I was in was a bit of a hot spot for trafficking. I didn't know this until after this had happened. A lot of very sketchy stuff. I might be overthinking this one. It might not be as bad as I think it was, but in the moment of it, I was sure something was going on. Edit. Thank you all for your incredibly nice messages. I can't tell you how much I appreciate hearing that I'm not the only one thinking this was all very sketchy. Also, I want to apologize for my poor English and grammar. It isn't my first language. A lot of people seem to be confused as for why I got back into the car again. I'm sorry. We had driven a bit away from the airport to some hangars or whatever you call it so I could get out of the car to call my parents. While I was out, I was only about three meters away from the car, and the door was still ajar, so I could hear the woman speaking on the phone. When I got back in, she was still talking with her, but hung up after a minute or so. She had the lady on speaker, so that is why I could hear her. I asked her to drive me back to the airport, and that was when she tried, convincing me to let her drive me into the city, but I told her no. As I have said in the comments, I now know how dangerous this could have been, getting back into the car with her, but I felt some sort of security that both of my parents and four of my friends in the same city I was in knew what was going on. She drove me back to the airport parking lot so I could get on one of the buses to go back since she would have to pay to get back in. I hope this clears up the confusion. For as long as I can remember, my family and another family would always travel from North Texas to Yarez, Mexico, a city just beyond the border from El Paso, Texas. We would go shopping at the outdoor shops all day, return to our vehicles to unload and repeat it all over again. We were a group of nine, four adults and five children. I was the only girl in the kids group. I often walked and stayed to myself since the adults would chat and the boys would do guy things. In this particular story, I was 12 years old. I had just bought a new gadget that intrigued me. So while walking, I got distracted and ended up staying behind our group. The crowds were large and the streets were packed with vendors and tourists. I remember being so fascinated with the object that I didn't notice how far ahead they were. I sort of panicked and looked around everywhere, but I couldn't see them. Almost instantly, as if this person was trained for this moment, a man comes running up to me, walks backwards in front of me, and begins asking me questions. Are you lost? I can help you. Follow me. You are so beautiful. You are so pretty. I can take care of you. 
You'll never find them. I've been watching you. You aren't from around here. He then proceeds to grab my arm, and I panicked and froze. I didn't know what to do or what to say. It's like I went numb. When he wouldn't stop, I knew in my gut that if I didn't find my family, I would never see them again. I then screamed at the top of my lungs, Mom! Dad! Help me! A lot of people turned around to look at us, yet no one helped me. The stranger seemed surprised that I did that and he froze. My parents must have been close by because the group came running and the men chased the guy around the shops and into the crowd. I began to shake and cry while my mother hugged me. We walked the long distance back to our cars and I remember crying forever. After I calmed down, they all asked if I was okay to walk again since we didn't do much shopping before the incident. I agreed and was scared to death, but I didn't want to disappoint anyone. When we were walking around again while my mother held my hand, she pointed out the man that tried to take me. He saw us from afar and took off running. We gave a description of the man to every police officer that we saw. Hours later, after shopping and eating, we were headed back to our vehicles. We saw the man being handcuffed. He apparently attempted to abduct another child.